Well, 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 folks, it's that time again. Another episode of Rim Shots with Sean brought to you by Barstools and Band Talk. I have a young fellow that I met, oh, a little short of a week ago last Friday night, uh, Mr. Zach Smith from Stone Brother. How are you doing, sir? Not too bad. How are you? So um, tell, tell us what you guys were up to last Friday night and what happened. Sure thing. So last Friday night, we were at uh, Monty's Show Bar and Grill uh, for the final round of the uh, Surge 105 Rising Surge Battle of the Bands. Uh, it was it was uh, us up against the, the Royal Volts, Topless Models, and Diamond City. And uh, we uh, we managed to come away with the win that night. We were real, real stoked about it. And um, should should point out that there was uh, four nights uh, that took place. Uh, so there would have been a total of 16 bands and, and you guys would have been one of them. Uh, that, my math ain't great, but that's 16 bands. So out of 16 bands, I don't know how many others entered. You guys came out with the win. So, um, you know, were you, uh, were you guys going in there expecting that? Were you just, you know, anything happens? Uh, what was, what was your mindset going into that? Uh, the mindset is, was pretty much, we're going to do the best we can and, and, and see what happens. I mean, we're all, you know, I think everybody went in hoping to win, obviously. Um, but, you know, there were some great bands in there. So I got there a little late. Um, Rob, so we got a we got a table at Monty's Barstools and Van Talk has a table. And I, I look up, I come in, who's sitting at my table but Rob Wells from the Trailer Park <laughs> Boys. Um, didn't have the heart to bounce him out of there, but he was wearing a Stone Brothers shirt. Is there is there a connection there to Rob? Uh, a little bit. Leo is good friends with Rob's daughter. Very Leo's good. our player. Well, hey, you know, so it doesn't hurt when you have a guy like him kind of, you know, bouncing around with the swag. And I should point out, you had a young lady that was wor working your merch table at the back of, of the room where I wound up. Who was that? Uh, it was our good friend, Cheyenne Baker. She's uh, worked with e my brother, Ethan, and I both work at an um, ENF Weber Lakeside Park uh, campground on the Eastern Shore. And she's worked there with us um, for a, a, quite a few years. And I went to high school with her and everything. And she's just a great person to have on the team. She's been booking our shows uh, for us and running the merch table and generally keeping us all on track. And I would say hats off to her because I get to see her in action. She was uh, she was doing a great job. And it's, uh, you know, when you get people that uh, that can help you in that capacity, and look, I, I have them on, on this thing, um, it makes life a whole heck of a lot easier. Absolutely. So tell me about Stone Brother. I mean, I had kind of heard a little bit – I admittedly am not as immersed in that scene as I should be. I'm, I've, I've been getting there and I've been, you know, kind of figuring out who the players are, but tell us about Stone Brother. Sure thing. Um, so the band consists of myself on, on uh, guitar and lead vocals. My brother, Ethan is on drums and uh, backup vocals and occasionally piano. Uh, and we've got Leo Cox on the bass. Um, my brother and I have been, playing together since we were little kids um in the basement leo leo joined us six seven years ago now um to to fill us out uh, and we uh yeah we we started writing pretty much immediately and Le at the time leo was only i think 13 and i would have been 15 16 and ethan would have been two years younger than me we started writing pretty much immediately um and just kept kind of going from there um and we were influenced by all the like metallica van halen all the big 80s names um like the hard rock and metal guys but we also get influenced from like the tragically hip and and other stuff like that and rush um so when I heard you guys, I was I was you know and not knowing your age, but you know kind of kind of get the sense that you were you're young. And and I would I'll, I'll say this. I mean I've been at it a long time, and you always worry about. Uh, I know I, I when I was coming up, the the group before me was probably looking at myself and our group and going, "Oh my God, this is who's going to like carry us to the next phase." And you know, crossing their fingers and rolling their eyes at the same time. But I was I was impressed with what I saw. But I remember, you know, you guys great players, great band, uh, but the level of professionalism at a young age was uh was super impressive now is that something that just comes naturally to you guys or do you guys just have to kind of you know sit down and, and figure out how you how that's going to play well yes and no some of it comes pretty naturally um from kind of 
watching and watching and learning, I guess. Um, like my my dad, me and Ethan's father, um, was in bands when he was younger um, through the '90s and early 2000s. So we um, and he's been he's played with the other people in the community um, off and on. So we always watched him, and we've always watched like going to concerts and stuff. You watch who's playing and kind of learn from them, and um, and like the festivals and stuff. You watch the older bands and and watch what they're doing and learn from them. And I I've uh, for for me going through my teenage years, um, I was around. I got the opportunity to see uh, the Royal Volts a lot and Andre Pettipa and the Giants a lot, and I, I learned a lot from watching those two bands as a front man. Learned I learned a lot of what to do from them, but the other stuff through watching YouTube videos of live performances of big bands and stuff like that, and watching them go. But some of it is sit down and all right, here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to dress. Here's we're going to, we're going to try these things. But a lot of it is just kind of playing around on stage and having fun with it. So a shout out. So your, your dad is Rick Smith, Rick Smith. And he would have played with who? Uh, there was a band called frayed not, um, oh. back in the day. <laughs> I don't read yeah, very well. Man. Yeah. I had no idea. He was your father. That's hilarious. He's the old man. That's right. Yeah. Rick, a uh, great singer, funny, funny as heck guy. He actually, he played, uh, Ian Fancy, who currently plays in my band, played with Rick for years. That's right. Yeah. So uh, tell him I said hi. Will do. Was he out on Friday night? Uh, he was out the week before, but he didn't make it to, the, to this one. Right on. That's amazing. And you, uh, and you grew up where? Eastern Shore. Eastern Shore. Like what part? Clam Bay. So, uh, in terms of a music scene, because I, I remember talking to your dad a number of times, and I remember seeing him, uh, he was in a band before Afraid Not, they were doing Tesla and stuff like that, and he and I kind of were, you know, cut from the same cloth in terms of, um, you know, music. Was there a lot of music going on for you out there when, when you were growing up? Uh, in the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was. Uh, there was always something going on the, on the TV or on the radio or whatever, but in terms of, like, live performances you had pretty much had to go to dartmouth anytime you wanted to see music more or less well we're gonna uh we're gonna end segment one right there my friend we're gonna come back on the flip side so sit tight sure well hey kids we're back room shots with sean brought to you by bar stools and band talk and, and again you know that you do the show long enough and and you start to uh eventually interview you know siblings and kids of friends and and we just found out in the last segment that uh uh, Zach is uh, the son of uh, a friend of mine, Rick Smith. So that's amazing. Um, so, you know, you mentioned you had to come into Dartmouth. You guys. So, how many shows have you guys, I guess, been playing? Well, how often, for starters, how long has the band been together? Um, six, seven years, somewhere okay. like that. But we were. I was in. I was in high school uh, when this iteration of the band started. Like I said, Ethan and I have been playing since we were little kids. So, I mean, that much of the band has been going on since the beginning but uh, this this band under this name has been going probably six years i want to say and if you're from uh the eastern shore then you would you went to eastern shore high that's right so you probably would have eventually got to know a guy by the name of dave roberts oh yeah i know dave very well so Dave's story, Dave's the guy who probably should have been a superstar because uh, one amazing singer, He's he's been a, a friend and a, a mentor of mine for years. I mean, that guy, uh, you know, you always talk about the ones that should have and didn't, and he's a guy that definitely should have, just super talented. He has a Trunk 7 out there every year. And I know he does a lot of music stuff in the school. Um, so if you know him, he must have been, I guess, a source of uh, feedback and, and, and mentorship for you a little bit, maybe? Oh, 100%. 100%. They, they've been great, all very supportive, shown us what to, shown us the ropes all the way through. I can't say enough good things about Dave Roberts. Dave's amazing. He, he, fa he thinks he's a good golfer, so we'll give him that. But he's also a Montreal Canadiens fan, so we won't give him that. But anyway, um, so how many shows have you guys been doing, like, uh, you know, uh, per year? Or is, has it, uh, you know, what's that like for, for getting things booked? Um, it's kind of an abstract number. I mean, it's uh, as much as we can, really, is the best I can give you. There's been some months where it's been 
once a week kind of thing, but there's been some where it's been, we just weren't able to put, put anything together in time, especially with the pandemic. Um, when that, like we had, we were in the midst of booking a bunch of stuff when that, when that happened. So that really set us back, but I mean, we play as much as we, as much as we can. So how do you find, so I, I, I've, I've, I've got to know a few people from different bands, like Mitch from uh, Dogs of Sun is a buddy of mine, and mm-hmm. other bands like that. How do you find the scene for original music is in, in Halifax? Um, it's kind of a double-edged sword because the, the people in the scene, the bands themselves and the fans are all just great. They're really supportive. Everybody's looking to play and go see shows but at the moment there's not a from for for bands of our level we're fairly you know we're still fairly young there's not a whole lot of infrastructure in place so it's 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 a little bit hard to to move up to the next step i guess but it's from what i've seen it seems to be getting better all the time so i'm hoping hoping for a bright future here, here's here's my observation. So I, I um, you know, now getting to know you, and and I, I knew Mitch, and I, I uh, met Shadow of uh, the Shadow of Ever's uh, boys there in the summer, and uh, had them on my the show. And uh, when I was out, I was out twice. I, I I I didn't make all of them, but I was out once, and then I was out for the final. My takeaway is is that you know, so I I do some recording, and I you know I'm do I have a, an artist that I'm working with that's putting out her own stuff, but I have two cover bands that I play in. And I find that what I saw on Friday night, everybody was so supportive. People that weren't even playing that night were out, were cheering you guys on versus the cover band. And, hey, I'm going to say it might get ripped for it, but it is what it is. They kind of stand there with their arms folded, you know, and and wait for you to kind of fall off the cliff, right? Um, Am I off base in that? Is that what was what I was seeing was the right thing? Um, I kind of think it kind of depends on on uh, where you go but yeah for the most part um all the, there's there's a lot of that like the people are really supportive of that kind of thing the only you know i'm not in the advice giving business i mean i do help bands out where i can and stuff but the, the one thing that i always try to tell people is that um you know if everybody works together you know, everybody might not make it, but some somebody's going to. And, you know, fighting against each other usually means nobody's going to. And so what you really have to do is you all have to work together. And, um, you know, if you look at things that happened like in Seattle in the 90s or, you know, Los Angeles in the late 80s, all those bands in one way or shape or form were working together and they all kind of bubbled to the top. Um, sure. Is there that sort, sort of sense of camaraderie on your scene where everybody's kind of helping each other out or is it is it a little competitive? Um, there's starting to be, I guess you could say, and it's nothing, not, 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 that sounds like it's against the bands. It's not against the bands at all. Uh, with the pandemic, it, it kind of set everything back a little bit right? and it's starting to come around again now, but there was a while where everything was just so uncertain that nobody wanted to make the first move kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, the Royal Volts even two of those guys came out to see our first round at that Battle of the Bands when they weren't even when they weren't playing. Um, so like guys like that always want to play really and play with you or see your shows. And I was talking to to uh, the guys from Shadow on our on our first night, and then um, uh, Diamond City there on on Friday night, and they were both yeah man we should play together again it'd be a lot of fun so like we're every time you go see a see everything every time you go play or see a gig you're always going to be saying we should play together like you're always finding yourself trying to set up the next thing like two or three times every night it's great yeah and i mean you know (laughs) i i I can say this because it's 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 my sort of deal my show but when this show this podcast came out of something to do during the pandemic because nobody was able to do anything. And there was a sense of, oh, you know, we all get a band together and we all get to help each other and la, 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 And then as soon as everything opened up, not everybody, but it kind of seemed like, you know, it was every every man or woman for themselves. And so that little bit of momentum that we had of everybody helping each other kind of got 
spread out. Um, and I hope for you guys that that doesn't happen because, uh, I, you know, you have a powerful opportunity if everybody works together to help each other out. Yeah. No, I think in the next couple of years, Halifax could again turn into a really, really good music city if we, if we, if we want it bad enough. Fair enough. So, hey, man, we're that's segment two. I mean, this is crazy. We're we're blowing through it. So, what we're going to do? We're going to hit the hit pause. We're going to come back for segment three after this. Well, we're back. This is too easy, Mister Zach Smith, Stone Brother. I uh, saw these guys last Friday night at Monty's. Um, so. I tell you what was really neat, and um, you know there was a good crowd there. I'm used to seeing, you know, in, in in situations like that where a band goes on, they bring a crowd. As soon as they're done, everybody leaves. Next band comes up, next audience rolls in. There was a little bit of that, but for the most part, I thought everybody that was there stayed and, and hung out. Um, I thought it made for a great event. What are, what are your thoughts? Absolutely, it was really great to see. Um, people coming in for one band and sticking around for all the rest and, and showing support for everybody for music in general. That was really, really nice to see. So, um, you know, one of the things that's a subject that pops up quite a bit, uh, you know, in this podcast and different sorts of things is networking. And we kind of talked in the last segment about bands helping each other and stuff, but do you guys, when you're not playing, do you actively go out and see other people's shows and try to network and see what they're doing? And, and, you know, I won't say steal, but maybe borrow some things and, and, and sort of see who's, who's doing different things from you. As much as possible. Uh, I'm at St. Effects right now in any niche. So it, it makes it a little bit hard to, to uh, to be active in in the scene at all times, I pretty much kind of have to plan trips home for a real good reason. Um, uh, yeah, but as anytime I'm anytime I'm home, I'm I'll, I'll try to do something like that, and I'm always looking around on on Facebook and Instagram and seeing what everybody else is doing, um, and trying to you know get some ideas for for stuff and seeing kind trying to find out who's the who's the people that are in the in the know at the moment um if you're down there this weekend there's a show going on i can't exactly remember what the room is but uh, my friends in farewell town are playing down there on i want to say tomorrow night but i could be wrong um really uh really smoking country band that are pretty much all from cape breton but live out down here in halifax so uh you know they say i don't give them enough plugs so there it is but uh anyhow um so what well, now you guys, you guys win this 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 deal here, and amongst other things, you have the opportunity to go in and do some recording at Sonic Temple. And I've I've have a couple of friends who um, have been in there, rave about the place, say it's great. Uh, have you sort of started giving some thought as to when that's going to be, or or have you lined it up yet, or what, what's what's taking place? Yeah, so we have a a meeting with uh, Lil Thomas, the the engineer there. Um, over the over the uh, over the weekend to kind of discuss the next step forward um, and to 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 uh, solidify a schedule with him. Um, what I can I don't I don't know how many details I can give you at, at this time. Um, you know, got to keep the mystery the mystery up and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, what I do know is that. We when we did our second EP, we did five songs, um, in two days, for a lot less than fifty, and then uh, then uh, five thousand dollars. Yeah. So, like, this is a band that goes in and gets stuff done. So we're excited with to see what we can do with with uh, a lot more, a lot more time and money and resources than we've ever had available to us before. Where did uh, where did you do that album? The first one. Uh, well, the first one was was um, just at home. Yeah. That's called First Things First, and that was when I was I was I think that came out when I was nineteen and just starting to learn the very basics of of uh, recording, and it definitely shows. Um, but the second one we did at uh, Joel Plaskett's studio in Dartmouth, which I think now is called Fang Recording. Yeah. Uh, and that was just a great experience that was engineered by Alex Burris. Um, and we had a whole lot of fun doing that. And I mean, you would know it, you know, it's, 
there's nothing worse than when you go into a studio uh, and you're paying X amount of dollars per hour and the timer's going off in your head and somebody isn't ready and you got to stop and do another take. And uh, for being prepared when you go in the studio is probably the most important thing that, uh, that you can do. Totally. Well, you mentioned it. You guys show up and get down to business and get your work done and, and get out. So with five grand, you guys might make the black album or something. Holy smokes. That's <laughs> a lot of, a lot of time and a lot of money. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know, man. You never know. Um, so obviously, you know, that's take that your first meeting is taking place. If, if you were to set a goal, uh, the I guess the efforts of what's going to take place from that contest, you would like to see out to the public by when? Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> uh, we're a little early to think about that one yet we do have a new ep that's about to be released in within probably within the next month with okay. um, with uh eardrum valley records in toronto yeah um so it'll we would like to give that one a little bit of time to 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 uh, develop i guess uh before we release anything else it's a good point because uh there was a post that I, I had on my, my Facebook uh, page. Uh, was it today? I don't remember. But anyway, uh, a good friend of mine who uh, he's a motivational speaker and, and, and coach and stuff. And he says, you know, success is one opportunity in preparing to meet. But there's a third thing that people forget about, and that's timing, right? right? So you can get the opportunity. You can be prepared. But the timing is something that uh, that's a realm that you can't control. Like things are going to happen when they're going to happen. I think with what you're what you're saying here, if this EP comes out, buys yourself a little bit of time to work on the other thing, so there's no panic. You can sit there and you can get it to get it to where you want it to be. That's right, and we can kind of push the EP with those songs while we're working on a strategy for releasing the whatever the new project is going to be. Fantastic. So look, we're almost done the segment, but before we we wrap up, where can my viewers? find out about the band and where, where can they find your, your music? You can find our music on Spotify, Apple music, YouTube, Deezer, uh, and you know, all million other streaming services that distro kid gives us access to. Um, you can find the band on Facebook and Instagram at stone brother online. Fantastic. Well, Zach Smith, you know what, bud, it was great to meet you last Friday night. Um, and now that, uh, I know that we have a, you know, uh, uh, another connection, uh, like I said, your dad's not only a, a good guy, but he's one of the funniest individuals that I know. I've, I've seen him play a bunch of times and, and always a hoot. So thanks for doing this, sir. And, uh, best of luck and, you know, keep working hard, man. It's good that you're going to your university and having, making sure you got something to fall back on. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sir. It was a pleasure. Peace out.